Atogoria agwa taniro ya azimio la umoja mare igei karoine na adiki ya mohoro magiki ya kafiro dereti ya medeki dhia mawadho wa kigeina goro hamwe na bajeti ili ya radho miro umudenya waira na leo tukinye mwena wa karen shi karoine neneshia wa ipato dikiririe mare ya maradhi na abere. 25 hyperbole, flowery language and complicated figures it simply does not stimulate economic activity. It does the opposite and seeks to tax every adult Kenyan 24,000 shillings more, additional to all what we all know as, for example, the housing tax and the very lean pay slips. Ladies and gentlemen, this can only be termed as a reckless race to the bottom. I don't know how many times C.S. Ndungu repeated the words bottom up, bottom up. Mm -hmm. So became so boring. And Kenyans have lost touch with that kind of phraseology. Do not take our word for it. These are some of the examples of increased expenditure. Number one, Office of the Executive President, 1.2 billion shillings. Office of the Deputy President, 678 million shillings. Minister of Defense, 11 billion shillings. Addition. 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 All these additional. Addition. Foreign Affairs, 1.4 billion. National Treasury, 6 billion. One wonders what the Treasury has to spend uh, this money for. Minister of Transport, 1.3 billion. Minister of Cooperatives, 2 billion. This is a 23.6 billion increase in recurrent expenditure. This is a budgeted corruption in the name of tea, mandazi, and flowers. This is not development, but sheer eating. It's their turn to eat, so they believe. Further, we highlight the following misplaced allocations. Number one, the National Treasury has 26 billion more in the name of development. Two, the State Department for Devolution as an increase of 2.6 billion in development expenditure. If this regime believes in the success of devolution, then these funds should form part of the equitable share to the county governments. Number three, the State Department of Housing has been allocated an additional, and an additional 72 billion shillings. This is higher than that of 10 counties combined. What is the line item 1071-1066-00? Is it the sign of the beast, some wonder? <laughs> Strategic response, this is what it is. That particular line item is entitled Strategic Response to Public Initiatives. Strategic Response to Public Initiatives. That comes to 2.5 billion shillings. If that is not budgeted corruption, what is it? Who amongst you learned members of the media and even learned friends in the legal fraternity can tell us what the meaning, the meaning of strategic response to public initiatives? We estimate one trillion shillings as budgeted corruption for the next financial year. In light of these grievous transgressions, we, as a coalition, urge the international community, the civil society organizations, and concerned citizens, both at home and abroad, to stand in solidarity with Kenyans in condemning Kenya Kwanzaa's regime's blatant disregard for the public good. We call for quick action to bring those responsible for this breach of trust accountable and to lobby for a budgetary framework that prioritizes the needs and concerns of all Kenyans, not just the privileged few. Kenya Kwanzaa may have been successful in unveiling its punitive budget, but it has fallen short of its obligation to lead with honesty, with fairness, and compassion. Kenyans deserve better, and we will not stop fighting for them to be given the voice and direction they so richly deserve. On the Finance Bill 2024, as our second item, the Kenya Kwanzaa Regis Planned Finance Bill 2024 
seeks to fund a 3.914 trillion budget through tax collection of 3.354 trillion shillings. This grandiose goal comprises several new and amended tax measures that will have a substantial impact on both individuals and businesses in our country. As Mio believes that Kenyans can only thrive if we stimulate the economy, not if we arbitrarily and consistently raise their tax burden. If the bill is passed, as written, Kenyans must be prepared to give up their, to, to, to give up their belts or what remains of them in the second wave of KK taxes. We know that ordinary Kenyans, Mamamboga, Boda Boda riders, and the people of Mjengo and Kokoteni have nothing to gain from this bill because Kenya Kwanza is targeting them for the second time with a double taxation plan that aims at to increase taxes by approximately 24,000 shillings per adult Kenyan per year. The majority of the tax measures in the 2024 finance bill are punitive in nature with substantial consequences for Kenyans. For example, the new tax on motor vehicles proposes a 2.5% tax on the value of motor vehicles with a minimum of 5,000 shillings and a maximum of 100,000 shillings, which if adopted will raise the cost of car ownership and result in higher insurance rates. It is predicted to have an impact on the transportation and logistics industries, thereby increasing the cost of living via a multiplier effect. The new withholding tax on digital marketplaces levies um, a 20% tax on non-residents and 5% on residents' income from digital marketplaces. This tax, this, ra this will raise tax compliance expenses for digital marketplace operators, perhaps leading to higher pricing for consumers as businesses pass on the tax burden. The proposed rise in excise duty on money transfer services from 15% to 20% will raise the cost of financial transactions hurting both businesses and individuals who use these services daily. The significant economic presence tax, which proposes to replace the digital service tax with a 30% tax on non-resident digital service providers, taxable profit calculated as 20% of gross turnover, will significantly increase the tax burden on digital service providers from 1.5% under DST, abbreviation for digital service tax, to an effective rate of 6%. This will deter digital companies from operating in Kenya, which could stand the sector's expansion. Kenya's exports, sorry, Kenya's efforts to establish a circular economy to manage its waste and become a regional recycling hub will be further undermined by the recently proposed eco-levy environmental tax, which targets